All right, let's talk about stress. Uh, not the low grade stress from things like your student loans or your ballooning waistline, uh, not even medium grade stress like when you're trying to zipper merge and everybody else on the highway thinks they're in a game of Mario Kart. That's not really stress, you see. That's just life. No, I'm talking about real stress, the kind of workplace stress that gives you PTSD. You know, let me give you an example. I worked for a MarTech startup for a bit. Now, all startups are kind of nutty, but this place was on another level. In the first four days at this company, I was asked to step in as a lead engineer to rescue a floundering team, where the team had mysteriously imploded the week before I started under circumstances that I still don't fully understand. Now, my mentor at the company and the individual with the deepest knowledge of the systems was fired, which left me to operate a huge system I had no hand in building using tech I'd never seen before. So naturally, there was a major outage that brought down a critical third-party integration for 36 hours. Now, the company was getting absolutely crucified on social media, and the CEO of the company who I'd never even seen in person, started lashing my team over Slack, publicly shaming us for breathing his air. Remember, this all happened in the first four days. You would not even believe all the other shit that went down at this company. Uh, a few weeks later, at an all-hands meeting, about 70% of the company was laid off via PowerPoint ambush. Yes, after an excruciating dissertation on the rule of 40 and a slideshow showing the Titanic hitting a glacier, the CEO announced that if your name is on the next slide, clean up your desk and leave the building. Yeah, that's the kind of acute stress I'm talking about. That's PTSD stress, the kind of stress that takes years off your life. Oddly enough, throughout all of this drama, I heard a very common refrain from my teammates. How are you so calm right now? Why aren't you freaking out? How are you keeping it together? Well, <laughs> I wasn't always good at dealing with stress. I had to learn how to do it. And I didn't figure it out by working in tech, that's for sure. Now, listeners of this podcast might recall that I have a background in coaching, so I know a bit about emotional management. Uh, much of coaching is really about emotional management. Now, I don't coach athletes anymore, but I still compete in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That's a full contact martial art where guys with cauliflower ears try to strangle you unconscious or break your arm. And now when you're getting strangled with the collar of your own gi and your field of vision is starting to shrink into a pinprick, and then you realize you're seconds away from soiling yourself and then potentially dying. Well, compared to that, the nonsense you encounter at work in your air-conditioned office seems kind of trivial. Well, uh, jiu-jitsu is not for everybody, but I think most people could benefit from better stress management. So for this episode of the Imposters Club, I thought it would be good to share some stress management techniques I've picked up over the years. Here we go. The first technique is called 3x3. Three three. Uh, this is a technique taught to special forces who have to deploy to combat zones. And here's how it works. When you feel yourself starting to panic, you state three things you can see, then state three things you can hear, then state three things you can feel. Uh, the effect of this exercise is that it gets you out of your head and grounds you in the present by activating your senses. Your senses are your connection to the real world. When you activate your senses, you connect to present reality and disconnect from the crazy jumble of worries and fears that turn your head into a Sharknado. Uh, after doing 3x3, three three, hopefully you'll find that the reality around you is rarely as bad as the crazy spider web of nightmare scenarios that your imagination can conjure. By the way, there's another version of 3x3 three three called 54321. Uh, this technique requires you to see five things, hear four things, um, smell 
two things, I forgot, feel three things, smell two things, and taste one thing. I have used this technique su successfully in the past, but it takes a little bit longer than three by three, and so it's less useful when you need to ground or center yourself quickly. But you can kind of see why the special forces would prefer the shorter three by three version. Um, it's probably not that easy to think of one thing you can taste when bullets are whizzing past your ears. So I do the three by three exercise literally every time I compete in jujitsu or when I'm just feeling overwhelmed at work. It's an incredibly powerful way um, to manage your emotions when stress is threatening to overwhelm you. The second technique is one I stole from Lou Holtz, the legendary coach of the Fighting Irish. And coach Holtz would train his teams to short circuit stress by asking themselves, what's important now? The acronym is W-I-N, or WIN. The WIN principle is incredibly powerful because it forces you to solve the problem that's in front of you rather than fretting about imaginary problems. If you allow your mind to wander to things that might happen, you end up pursuing fool's errands, like, say, future-proofing. Now, we all know that future-proofing is a terrible idea when it comes to software, yet countless cycles are wasted protecting against problems you might have. And when you focus on what's important now, you give yourself permission to apply maximal force to the problem you know you have. So the win principle works because you free yourself of an enormous mental burden and a major source of workplace stress. Now, coincidentally, the third stress management technique I want to share also comes from Notre Dame. This is from Cam McDaniel, who was captain of the Fighting Irish football team in 2014. I heard Cam on a podcast about mental performance uh, say something that blew my mind. To paraphrase, Cam said that world-class performance and false humility cannot coexist. Think about that. World-class performance and false humility cannot coexist. In other words, false humility becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you tell yourself you're not good enough, that you're not up to it, well, you're not good enough. You're not up to it. So how are you supposed to deal with all of the challenges that you face at work? If you don't even believe in yourself, how are you ever going to cope with workplace stress? Sorry, but the stress is not going away. You have to change. Um, so when I was working at that dumpster fire of a startup, it would have been really easy to let myself off the hook. I'm not up to this. This isn't what I signed up for. This is above my pay grade, etc., etc. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to stay calm when things are crumbling around your ears and when customers are flaming you on Facebook and the CEO is taking pot shots at your team over Slack. But world-class performance and false humility cannot coexist. As Henry Ford once said, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. So why give away your power? Most stress is self-inflicted. If you don't like it, choose to be world-class or die trying. <laughs>